Hello, friends. Welcome to Life of Love. I have a special guest today, Sandy Joy Weston. She has an over 30 year history of following her dreams as an advocate for health and wellness, an entrepreneur, and even the face of Philly's fitness as a media personality for NBC 10. She has been on the cover of the New York Times. Welcome, Sandy, to Life of Love. <laughs> you know, I'm listening to that. I'm like, wait a minute. I forgot I did that. <laughs> Deep dived on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, wait a minute. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. It seems like you've had many lifetimes, right? Like you're in a different phase right now, but I wanted to honor where you've been, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, you've had it adventure after adventure. I sure have. Life oh. has been fun. Ups and downs, of course, but all over fun. Oh, well, yes, I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to keep rolling, right? Yeah, exactly. Sounds like you have. Exactly. So your latest endeavor with the SJW Productions, can you tell that can you tell my audience about that and how you're looking at positivity in the world and, and even give a little background of, of how you got into that, Sandy? Well, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life, didn't plan on it, but it fell in my lap and it was amazing owning health clubs. So for over 30 years, I've owned Weston Fitness Health Clubs around the Philadelphia area. And then in 2019, we got a new landlord in one of my properties in Center City, Philadelphia, and he wanted to buy me out, me and my partner out. And it was a great opportunity. So we took it. Now, I really didn't want to. We had two and a half years left on the lease. It was a 20 year lease. I wanted to stay in it. But I thought, ooh, if we stay in it, he's not going to renew the lease, the new landlord, and I'll get nothing. So he, like, he started in on us trying to get a sell in 2018. And finally, in 2019, we did. Now, looking at how the universe, was looking out for me, it was the best time to sell before a pandemic. Before, I mean, yes, yes. Right. Because here I am, 26,000 square feet in Center City, Philadelphia, in most of the market being corporate. So everybody was coming from a three block radius. Can you imagine what would have happened to the business? Oh, your customer base and even the modifications you would have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. And closing down. I, and we're, you know, we're a small business. We're not a big chain. We would have made it. So when that happened, what I did is I took some time off a year to travel and have fun, figure out what I wanted to do. But what happened is I decided to make my side gig, my main gig. So SJW Productions, that's what I called it. I was already doing those things. I was already hosting podcasts way long ago. I was already doing keynote speaking engagements and workshops and writing books. So I took the side gig and made it my main gig. And so I was going to ask you, that was going to be one of my later questions was what's your biggest joy? And I'm sort of getting the feeling that, that what you're doing with spreading your message is a great joy, but um, am I over speaking or is that, you know, your heart is, you know, I always, focus in every single day, Julie, on how I want to show up in the world. So it's always from a love-based word, whether it's joy, love, peace, it doesn't matter, uh, fun, power, anything that's coming from love-based. And I think about every time, you know, I'm doing something, whether it's going on a podcast or emailing somebody that I'm, you know, nervous about emailing, am I coming from joy? Am I coming from love? Am I coming from peace? Which is what I decided how I want to show up today. And recently, well, recently in the last few years, my word changed to when I would think of joy, because I, my middle name's joy. So I would pick joy a lot. And they used to call me, you know, my main mission in life was to spread joy. And I use fitness as my vehicle, whether I use books as my vehicle, it's to spread joy. So I would pick that a lot, but I changed it up a little bit. I changed it to say pure joy, because there's a difference between, okay, 
I'm like, I'm faking it. Like I'm supposed to be joyful now. Right. There's, and there's times you have to, you may not be feeling it, but you're going on a podcast, you're doing a speaking engagement and you can't be like, oh yeah, I'm sad today. <laughs> but I wanted to find that pure joy within me so that it would come out more in everything I did. So when I do that and I say, I want to come from pure joy, the things I pick to do are definitely bringing me not forced joy, but I'm really feeling joy. It's intrinsic, right? It's, yeah. it's you're resonating your internal joy. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've practiced many, many years of going inside and coming from my higher power and my energy force to feel how I wanted to show up in the world, no matter what is going on outside. So if you do that and you think about, okay, I'm going to wake up in the morning and how I'm going to show up in the world, no matter what's going on. Yes, you will be knocked around a bit, but you won't be like a ping pong ball. You know, letting the world like, OK, the world is just going to I'll see what the world's going to give me. And OK, I was happy, but now I'm sad. What's that? Do you know what I mean? Like if I don't hit traffic, if the my husband takes out the trash, if the kids don't scream, you know, you're not as affected. You are. Of course you are, but not quite because you've practiced for yourself every single day. That place of peace, love or joy, which I believe is our innate being, like how we are, like, that's how, you know, it's more ease and flow to us. It's tougher to be in the other stuff. So the more you do that, then you can show up with that. It's not like it's going to be that way all the time. I'm not pippy skippy. <laughs> like, life affects me, but you're just there more. You're just there more. Mm. I love, I love that message because it's, it's real and, and you're rebounding. And, and like you're saying, you're not responding. I mean, you're not reacting, you're responding. You're coming from your place, your centered place of Correct. joy. Correct. And uh, yeah, that's, it's a powerful thing. And, and uh, I'm telling it. you, and I feel like as I get stronger in it, different things come at me to even, well, I don't, I'm trying to think of the right word, but to even not, not force show to what, cause I want to, but to mm -hmm. even experiment with going even deeper of how I can really feel that pure joy, no matter what really is being said to me or about me, like, which putting myself out there for that extreme, um, hit, it's not something I'm used to, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm usually, you know, I keep the peace. People like me, I'm filled with joy. But recently the things I've been going to do, I've been being hit hard with people not getting me, not understanding me, not knowing what I'm doing. And I have to be okay with that. And so if I'm coming from that real place of pure joy and why I want to do this, I don't get knocked around so much, if that makes sense to you. That makes total sense. Yeah. It really does because you're, you're, you're not going to feed into any of that negativity. You're transmuting yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Because you're, you're not changing your state, even though it's coming at you. Yeah. And I mean, this is ex existential, but yeah, you know, maybe that's, that's your next level. Like you're leveling yeah. up. And you know, that, oh, I like that. Yeah, I'm going up to the next level. That's the word I was thinking of. Like, you know, I'm just up leveling because yeah. I want to go deeper. I want more. I'm always on a growth path. Uh, when was it? It was a few weeks ago that I encountered an old, old friend, and they were in a very bad space. And they said, you know, don't you feel bad for me or whatever? And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going through this. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, I pray for you. I love you. I'm sorry you're going through this. And what they did is say, well, you know, do you feel like guilty? And I go, guilty? Meaning that you can't help me. And I said, no. I don't, I don't feel guilty. I'm sad. Like, I don't want you to be in this place, but I don't, 
I don't honestly know what to do. You know, maybe I'm not the right person to do it for you. And this gentleman said to me, well, then you're a horrible person for not feeling guilty. And I went, oh my God, no one's ever said that to me. Now, normally, like maybe 10 years ago, that would have been like, oh my God. But I was okay with it. Meaning, I don't believe you should feel guilt for stuff like that because you can't get sick enough to make somebody well. You can't get poor enough. Now you might have empathy, compassion, but when somebody wants to take you into the world that they're suffering in and bring you there because they don't know how to get out, I, I'm not about that. But that was hard for me. I thought I really have to up level here. Like that's the right word. Like I'm going because that took me for a jolt. And then I think it's like you said, I just keep wanting to up level. So I can put myself out there so I can impact more people because besides this person, there are going to be people that say things like that when you put yourself out there big. Mm -hmm. And kudos to you. I mean, you just, you didn't let him, let him suck. He's an old friend, right? You didn't want to let yeah. him down. You don't have a huge history anymore. You could have, your yeah. ego could have stepped in and said, Hey, I need to prove to myself that I'm a good person. But in your yeah. heart, you knew you're a good person. And it was doing. hard. It was hard. I, you hard. know that the divine feminine is just something that I'm totally, I'm all about the divine feminine. And sometimes love doesn't come as a hug and a handout. Sometimes love is like, I'm, I feel for you, like you had empathy, but you didn't get stuck yeah. in because yeah. you're, you're strong and you're standing for your divinity and you weren't going to yeah. let someone else yeah. bring down your, your, um, well, your and family. I get it. You know, it takes a lot when someone's in a really bad space for whatever reason, and they're suffering. It's hard for you to see people be really happy and pippy skippy and, and you know, oh, how's life? Great. You know what I mean? So I try not to come from there. But you also have to know that even though they think they want you there, they really don't. Because if you come and meet them where they are down here, you can't inspire them. You can't motivate them. You can't lift them up. You know, you just, you have to take a step back. So you, you have to know that you're, be I'm better off here in this vibration. Once I, and I've have gone down that path, mm -hmm. you're, you're no good to yourself or anyone else. So I tell myself, if I go that path and I don't stay in this higher vibration, I'm actually not going to help as many people. And that took me a long mm -hmm. time, Julie, to realize that there is nothing, nothing Nothing more important than how you feel. You cannot be of service to anyone else in that other space. You're going to be there, but you're more of service coming from love, peace, and joy. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And, and once you, once you hit that resonance, you don't want to go back and, and you can't, you're right. You can't make a big difference if you get sucked down and we've yeah. gotten so we've got punched in the gut so many times by negativity through yeah. the last two and a half, three years that I, I feel like if there's been like this, I don't know. I want to, if the picture of making butter comes to mind, like the cream has risen, right? Like there's, there's a ton of people that are saying the exact same thing that you're saying that I'm saying that, you know, we can't stay down there. We can't stay down in the punches. We've got yeah. to raise it up yeah. because that's the only way humanity is going to get through it. And, and I just love your, your take on it because it's empowering and, and it comes from wisdom and, and years your... of practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> years of practice. Oh, I you know we, we all hit, you know, we're Cuban. We've got it. We've got to resonate on the 3d plane. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but ask for help from above because there's, there's things there to help us. Our angels, yeah. our guides, our, our soul, our yeah. inner wisdom. You know, I know you talk a lot about angels. Do you want to hear a funny, not a funny story, but a story about my five angels? Your five. Yes. The Cinco's. <laughs> Of now, course I want I you to keep in mind, I didn't, I don't have any knowledge. I didn't study anything about angels. Now I saw some of your other podcasts. I want to, but <laughs> this is just from me and my life. I don't like, you know, how some people, they really, they know a lot about different angels and, you know, read books. This is just mm -hmm. my story. Okay. So since 
I was a, a kid, maybe, I don't know, I must have been like maybe four or five years old. I always believed in a higher power. Like I always thought there was something bigger out there. Okay. And then when I was, I think, nine years old, it's eight or nine years old, we had to move into the projects because my mother, she had severe mental health issues and spent about 50% of her life in mental institutions. So people were always coming to check on me. Like, are you okay? Because here we are, you know, thrown into the projects. The rest of the family is not. And my mother has severe, severe mental health issues. And she's in a mental institutions that are not, let's just say the well-funded ones. Okay. But here I am as a kid and they would come in, the, the, the ministers, the therapists that say, Sandy, you know, are you okay to, you know, me and my brother, you know, how are you doing and what's going on? I'd say, don't worry about me. I got five angels. Now, I don't know where it came from. All I kept saying, I got five angels. And by the way, on my desk, there's five angels that randomly people have given me and never anymore. So that's weird. And I need to buy them. And I never got an angel after the five. So I would say I got five angels and they're being like, Ooh, no more. I'm like, no, just five, but they laugh a lot. And I truly believed that I had this bigger purpose in the world and I was going to be okay, truly. And even when they would take me into the therapist's office, I remember they're putting their glasses down, like, how you doing, kid? You know, because this, these were severe circumstances. And I'd say, I'm good. And they'd look at me, they'd go, we don't know why, but you really are good. I go, I know. I got five angels. So <laughs> anyhow, fast forward, I, besides the five angels, I would use words, movement, and laughter to get in that positive headspace, which I had no idea was going to create this whole, you know, career for me. And I'd make a living out of it, but I knew it worked for me. So I think of a word every single day I wanted to focus on, even as a kid, one word, and I visualize how I was going to get to that word. I'd move. I've been dancing since I was four. My uncle paid for my dance lessons and I would make light of everything. Like I would tell a joke, like I would make light of everything. And with my words, if things got really difficult, I would journal different things. And those three things with my spiritual belief, I was able to visualize how I was going to graduate high school, which people didn't think you would, how I was going to get to college, how beyond get my master. I would get in that headspace just using those three things, not difficult, and visualize where I wanted to go. As I got older, and I would tell my friends about the five angels, it became, okay, can I borrow one? And I'd say, okay, let's bargain here. How many you need? How severe is it? How long are you keeping her? And we, <laughs> it would keep, but it was serious. Like, no, I just need one for the weekend. No, my dad. And it was this thing that people knew I had five angels. Now, oh my gosh. I don't think that a lot of people may have believed it, but they were thinking if it helps, it helps. And so that's why when I saw your podcast, it's not like I tell that story a lot because a lot of it's about mental fitness, physical fitness, but throughout my whole life, I've truly believed not just in a higher power, not just in we are love, peace, and joy, but that I have these five angels. Now I go to physical therapy just recently because I mountain bike and I fell off my bike a few times doing silly stuff. I did not know this woman did things with angels. They just said, she's a great physical therapist. And she's working on my neck. And the woman says to me, I'm not kidding, Julie. Yeah. Ooh, you got five angels. She's like, you don't have a lot. We have five. I go, I knew it. And she's like, and they laugh a lot. I go, I know. So that was the funniest thing to hear that, you know. Oh, my goodness. She Is read that angels. And after all those years, you know, that's. I just told myself there's nothing. I just have five angels. That's it. Blah, blah, blah. Did you name them? I mean, they're just I, the, the fabulous five. They're just there. I, I, I swear to you, I never <laughs> named them. 
No. I should. I'm thinking it's never too late. I'm sitting right there. But <laughs> they were just my gals. They, they were just like, this was my community. I got five angels. They're lifting you up. And, and you- everybody, and everybody, whether they believed or not, they're like, it, it mattered that you believed. So we need to borrow them. And I'd be like, okay, but I'm taking them back after this time. <laughs> Now, so wait, if anybody you, really needs them, I can, I can lend them out. We lend them, lend out. them out. That's like they're like your Charlie's angels. They're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're I'm Sandy's angels. Out. Yeah. They're, they have a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh. yeah. They're always in my corner. So you just, it was sentient. It was like, you just knew they were there. They, did they talk to you? Did they leave you signs? I mean. I always believe my higher power, I'm talking constantly connecting to a beautiful energy force. And for me in that energy force, I think there's angels on earth and there's angels where we can't see them. I'm always communicating with them. I just always feel that always feel. And I can tell when I'm connected and when I'm not, Mm. and I'll go. And I could hear him say, yeah, why are you trying to do that on your own? Like, come on back, come on back. Sandy, I have the same experience. They're like, we're right here. You just need to get to your heart place and ask us, you know, it is, it's a feeling. It's um, it's a feeling. And so it's not like I hear voices, but I feel so strongly connected at sometimes more than others, because we are in a human form. So you're not, if you felt that way all the time, then you're to the next form. Yeah. So I go in and out of feeling their presence, but they're always there. And whether, whatever I feel for some people, whether they think it's, whether it's angels and energy force, I, I don't care, you know, Buddha, Jesus, God, a rainbow. It's that force of love, peace, and joy that we all can tap into. So for me, I use fitness as my vehicle And I wanted to reach people that weren't considered uh, spiritual. I I would get in through sports psychology and, you know, in through, well, this is what athletes do, you know, how they connect to their mindset. I thought that people that were going to the spiritual connection and really into yogi, they had that. I was after the everyday person that's like, eh. So I could take all that spirituality and get it in through the back door in my average everyday classes, which I loved. Ah, oh, that's, it's so amazing. It's such a great thing. I, you know, and I, I got inspired to write my book and I was like, I'm just going to give people the words because they just don't know how to connect to their angels. Like I'm yeah. going to give yeah. them the words to ask. And so that's how I, I wrote my book around um, that whole idea that you can live a life of love and sensuality, but you can also ask for help. And um, absolutely. And like that movement thing is, you know, everybody connects to their divinity a different way, right? Like some yes. people it's yes. meditation. Some people it's moving. You know, I, I interviewed a man who is, he developed this, these sounds that he would have people like resonate the sounds to their body to get things moving. Like Ooh, however, that however works. resonate. Yeah. I, I've done that. That's cool. It, you just feel it moving. It's like, woof, that's gone. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I do th- dance resets. That's what I do. Um, almost every hour I get up and dance. Just could be to no music, could be to music, depending how much I need, you know? Yeah. That's, oh, it's a great way to move. Because I, I think that um, people, they, they realize the exercise helps their mood and they realize that it helps their body look better. Yep. But the, those hidden yep. spiritual things, you're, you're like the, through the back door. It's, yep. it's a wonderful. Have thing. you ever, have you ever heard of Kripala yoga? No, it's a, it's a great place. Kripala it's in Massachusetts and it's a big, big yoga retreat. And when I was going off traveling and trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And I'm not a yogi. I'm not a yogi, but I went there because I wanted more of the meditational connection and they have a million types of workshops and classes. And what I experienced is they did what they considered yoga in a lot of different forms. I mean, there was singing, there was chanting, there was dancing. I'm like, now this is yes. yoga. I can get behind. I can, yeah. It was fun. <laughs> So many different ways to connect. So many different ways. So many. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. If somebody only has one to three minutes, 
what is, what's that key thing that that person can do to change their life in one to three minutes a day? What would, yeah. The reason I did that is because, and I want to make sure I keep it concise because I know we're running out of time is that I spent years, years interviewing people, Julie, that I believed exuded pure joy. It didn't matter who they were, walk, whether they were professional athletes, CEOs, tennis players, stay-at-home moms. And because I own gyms, I got a really great cross-section of people and 100 people. And I wanted to see what their secret sauce was. And I couldn't find it. But then eventually, I saw it. Every single person, every single person mm -hmm. decided how they were going to show up in the world before they started their day. They did something, whether it was considered spiritual, sports psychology, logical, they did something to get into that powerful headset whether they meditated, prayed, worked out, played jazz music, petted their dog, walked, made muffins, and whether it took them a few minutes or two hours. So what then I did is I went and met with, I call them the powers to be. I met with sports psychologists, gurus, spiritual leaders, exercise physiologists, and we came up with a journal that ended up, it was originally five minutes. Nobody did it. We came down to something that would only take them one to three minutes and then people would do it. And it's one to three minutes for you to get into that headset, to remind you of what your goals and what you're going after every single day. It doesn't take long. So whether it's anything to go, oh yeah, this is what my power statement is. This is what I'm going after. And it's just a reminder for you. And the one thing I can tell people that they should do every single day, if they don't already, before your feet hit the ground, even just sitting there for 30 seconds to a minute, if you got more time, great. And deciding how you want to show up in the world. Like I said, just pick a word and it could be you're at such a low place that day. You just want peace or ease and flow. It doesn't have to be, woo, you know, decide. And then just writing it down and looking at it. And if you feel off, like check in with yourself every hour, hmm, is this going to bring me ease and flow? Is mm -hmm. this bringing me joy? How, mm -hmm. what could I do to reconnect that little thing? It's not time consuming. You could do it in the shower. You can do it while you're going potty. You could do it while you're driving. Just, it's just checking in with yourself and going, Oh, and then taking a step forward and like, what am I going after and why? And just looking at it, if you write it down, woo, woo, but it's not, it's that little things that you can do every single day that build on and retrain your body, mind, and spirit to be where you want to be, you know, not anybody else and decide how you want to show up in the world. So that's all I, I I'm not a complicated person. It's that tiny little thing that I've seen in myself, get me out of the horrific situation and create a life I really enjoy, but not just me. I've seen a lot of other people just mm -hmm. taking those few minutes just to get back in there. And then like, even when you work out or meditate, mm -hmm. if you did that first and not because I have to, and I should, what's going to bring me joy. And you're thinking about working out, you're going to pick a workout that brings you more joy or a meditation that brings you more joy. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's about. It's not like you may not do other stuff, Julie, that takes longer. It's that you are first in that headspace and then do it. That's it. Easy peasy. Ah, brilliant. Brilliant. And that intention, right? You're setting your, you're making, I like to say you're creating this vessel for what you want, but you have yeah. to set your intention. Yes. And then, you know, I, I tell people that if they're feeling like their word isn't resonating with them, they can ask for help. Say, help me find my my yeah. piece today. Help me see yeah. peace. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just, I just really adored your messages you shared today. I feel like we could have talked for three hours <laughs> instead of 30 minutes. I'm sure we could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sandy, it's been a pleasure having you. I really appreciate you. your time. Thank you. And thank you. You've given me this opportunity to spread a little more joy. Yes. And I'll share links to your books in the comments and um, your website. Um, I'll put that on there too. So people can, can find all your resources because you, you are a, a depth of wealth of information. It's fun. Thank I you. Thank I thank the angels it. for bringing us together. 
they're smiling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the five are laughing. Yeah, and dancing. Woohoo! <laughs> dancing. Okay, thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Toodles. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to the next episode. As always, you can reach me at www.youneedapeptalk.com. Be well, my friends, and enjoy each day as each moment is a chance to live the life of your dreams. Take care.